Hi there beautiful bakers, today we'll be making some condensed milk scones. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the recipe and I'll see you at the end. And these are our ingredients for today. First up we'll use one cup of sugar. We have one tin of condensed milk, 385 grams. And then we'll use two teaspoons of vanilla essence. We'll be using six teaspoons of baking powder, half a brick of margarine. Um, this one even has markings at the back, see there, so it makes it easy to guard your measurements. So it's half is 250 grams. And then we'll use one and a half cups of milk. And finally, we have six cups of cake flour. And I've already prepared my baking trays and lined them with paper. Not because we'll be making muffins or cupcakes, we're making scones. However, this is a herk I learned that I'm going to share with you. So let's get right into it. So, so I have my mixing bowl ready and I'm going to start with my margarine. I'm going to pour everything in there, the whole 250 grams and just scrape my bowl to make sure that I have all of it and I'm going to whisk this and beat it down until it's nice and softened. So I melted my margarine a little bit beforehand so that it's a bit softer. You can do that but if you leave it out in the sun for a while then it also softens up a bit so you can do that as well. Then I poured in my one cup of sugar and I'm just going to beat it down again till it's combined. Next I'm adding my vanilla essence. So I'm going to pour two teaspoons or two capfuls of vanilla essence. Now this is the small bottle, don't use the cap for the big bottle because they won't be the same size. If you have the big one then rather just use a teaspoon and pour it to two teaspoons in. Excuse me. And I'm going to mix that down as well. So I forgot to mention my eggs earlier on. You will need two eggs for this recipe that I forgot to tell you guys about. So I'm going to beat my eggs in a bowl. Always beat your eggs in a separate bowl. Don't crack the eggs directly onto your baking bowl, guys. Just in case one of the eggs are rotten or have gone bad, then you have to start all over again with all your ingredients. So rather do it in a separate bowl so that you can just throw them out if one is spoiled. And I'm going to mix that again and i'm adding my condensed milk now so basically the drill is wet ingredients first and then dry ingredients afterwards with the exception of your margarine because i prefer to start with my margarine however there are some people who prefer to mix in the margarine and sugar into the flour first before adding everything else but hey whatever works for you I just prefer to do it this way. It doesn't mean that you have to follow exactly what I do if you're used to a different method. So I'm pouring in all my condensed milk. So I left a little tiny bit in the uh, tin because I'll need to use that later to brush my dough. So I'm mixing that in and look at how smooth that looks, guys. So at this point, this is what your mixture should look like it should be runny it should be smooth try to get rid of all the lumps and bumps in there to get a smooth uh, homogeneous mixture and now i'm going to add my milk so milk is one and a half cups so i'm just gonna throw that in there as well Okay, I'm sorry about my background. I know it's not quiet, quiet. Um, so apologies for that. But I hope you can still hear. So I put in one already and I'm going to add the half. 
and then i'm just going to mix this as well just to combine it and once that is done we're moving on to our dry ingredients which are the flour and the baking powder so i've already measured out six cups in this little bowl so uh, you can either add this in bit by bit or you can just throw everything in there it's still okay because we've already measured it out and then after adding my flour i take my teaspoon and i'm going to add my baking powder so we're going to take six teaspoons two three four five six and then we mix so you have to mix a bit here to combine it you will mix for longer than you did with the other ingredients but at the end it should be combined it's not going to be smooth but it shouldn't have any lumps of flour left in there so my two assistants have arrived one is trying to get the dough for herself and the other one wants to help me bake and we're done so this is what it looks like so at this point your dough shouldn't be runny but at the same time it shouldn't be stiff it should be able to hold shape but you cannot mold it into a ball and it stays like that i hope you get what i'm saying so when filling our baking tray, our muffin pan, you have to fill it like halfway or up to three quarters. Don't exceed three quarters. Reason being, we don't want it to have a muffin top because we're making scones. So the pan is just there to help our scones hold shape. But it's not supposed to look like a muffin. Hence, we only fill it up to half or three quarters. And this is what it should look like when it comes out. It should not have the muffin top. You see the little love handles on the sides are not there. So we don't want that. And then the second hack is this one right here. I'm going to use a measuring cup and I'm just going to grease it a bit with oil, any type of cooking oil just so it doesn't stick to the measuring cup. So you need to make sure that your oil, the reason I'm moving it around like that is to just increase the coverage of my oil. I need to make sure that my oil covers like most, if not all of the cup. Because if there are spaces in between, then the dough is definitely going to stick to the measuring cup. It doesn't have to be a measuring cup. If you have anything that has that shape, then you can use that as well. And I'm going to put in my dough and just roll it around a bit just to help it get some sort of shape and put it on the tray. So this just helps them be rounded. That's the reason why I like using this. You see that it's not like defined, but it's going to be rounded so the only thing i wanted was the shape now this is for us lazy people right if you're not lazy you can just uh, powder your hands using flour and then take a little bit of dough shape it into a nice round little boleki and then just put it on the muffin pan that works as well but i'm lazy <laughs> so i prefer to work smart and not hard <laughs> so this is why i'm doing this and this is what it looks like so i'm going to just brush down some condensed milk on top of my scones like that this is just so they are nice and shiny on top and they have that golden brown color so basically we did that to enhance the look and into the oven they go so we're going to let these bake for a hundred and for 15 minutes at 118 degrees 180 oh my goodness did i say 118 <laughs> 180 degrees and this is what they look like when they come out look at that golden brown color guys it is very 
appetizing hey i love the look of it they look absolutely beautiful and you can see the size and the shape is almost even because of what we did there with our measuring cup and yeah this is definitely what i was going for and i'm happy with what they look like so just to show you guys what i meant with the muffin pan and the paper cups so look at what they look like immediately after you remove the paper cups. Do you see that shape? Absolutely beautiful. It's not a muffin. It's a scone, but it's nice and even and it's shaped beautifully. So that's what I wanted. You see that? Look at that. That one has a little bit of a love handle, but not too bad. It just means that I overfilled my paper cups. Look at that absolutely beautiful so this is a nice hack for you if you do not have a biscuit cutter then you can definitely use a paper cup and a muffin pan just don't overfill it and your scones will be nice and even and they will look absolutely beautiful and this is the second one look at that okay so the reason there's so little on my tray there is because <laughs> I have minions in the house and immediately when something comes out of the oven everyone wants to eat so this is all i have to show you guys but i'm pretty happy with the results i love how they came out look at that these are perfect for work functions if you're baking for family avomakoti if you're baking for the in-laws this is it they're absolutely delicious and they look good thank you for watching